Hello, good morning, everyone. How exciting to be here, the three of us. Good morning. Uh, I'm Ana Galena. I'm one of the co-hosts of this wonderful show, Flowers and Friends, where every Friday I get to hang out with these two lovely ladies. We get to talk about flowers, about how we're doing, and we always have the most fabulous guests to share with us what they're doing in their lives. We have Kara here with us. Yes. On. Hello. Yes. Hello. Um, I am enjoying the beautiful fall weather in Tennessee outside today. I thought it'd be fun to take you to one of my new garden areas I'm creating because one of the things we're talking about today is daffodils. Ooh. So I thought that would be fun. Welcome everyone. I'm Kira Jamison, one of the co-hosts of the Flowers and Friends talk show. And uh, we have a fun show today, don't we, Dion? We do, you guys. Look at us back together again. Ooh. It feels like it's been a long time, even though it's been just a couple of weeks. But uh -huh. welcome, everybody. We're so glad you're here today on this Friday for Flowers and Friends. I'm Dion Woods, owner and artist at the Turquoise Iris. And um, you know what, Kara? I don't know what you're going to be showing us today, but I saw a shovel in the background, and I'm here for whatever <laughs> you have to offer. You guys are going to love, love our guest today. You've seen her once before, though, but she's got some zombie juice, and I'm here for that. So uh, before we dive into what, how fabulous our day is going to be, let's run our intro video so you know what we're all about here at Bloom TV. Yay. Tina from Missouri, Susan, Mandy, Marilyn. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> yeah, give yourself a tag, comment, tag your friends, all of you um, that want to learn more about some spooky cocktails and mm -hmm. some daffodils. I have some questions about some iris bulbs that I have. I can't wait to tell you the story behind these. Um, you guys, what have you been up to? I've missed your faces. Uh, I know, I know. I've been all about the kids and family, really. I've been busy with my family, but things are starting to fall into place again, I think. <laughs> no, yes. no pun intended. I saw what you did there. And what about you, Kara? What are you doing outside <laughs> in the garden? Well, I just had a fabulous vacation with my family at the beach <laughs> down in the Gulf. And let me tell you, the weather was perfection and the water was just see-through and amazing. But I came back home because fall is like the busiest planting time of the year. And so behind me, I have been planting a lot of seeds. Um, I know it's hard to... Hard is that to what that is back there? there? Because oh, I'm going to tell I've started here. They're not done yet, but um, this time of year is where we plant, when we plant a lot of spring flowers. And okay. so I have been planting things like sweet peas. Um, I know you guys probably know those flowers. They smell amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I've been planting nigella. That was one of the fun Ooh. flowers I talked about uh -huh. several episodes ago earlier this spring. And uh, right now is the time of year to plant them right now. And they start blooming in April and May of next year. And Ooh, so goodness. thought it was gorgeous today. Thought I'd sit outside with you. We're going to chat about daffodil bulbs here in a little bit. So that's what I've been up to. Well, <laughs> I'm thrilled that you're out there. It's really nice. Our skies look the same. You're in Tennessee and I'm in Oklahoma, but our skies look the same. Um, I want to remind everybody that's on today that we have a special feature for you tomorrow. And it is about how to use lilies in your fall bouquets. And I, I'm kind of new to that. I never really thought of using a lily because I only think of those beautiful white ones with uh -huh. the pink that we see so often. Um, and as a matter of fact, I think we also have a, an update from Nina Beltran, who was on our uh, episode 20. Um, she sent us a video of yes. that painting that she started with us. So let's roll a clip so all of our viewers can see what she's been up to as well. Hi friends, I'm Nina Beltran. 
I was on episode 20 of Flowers and Friends, sharing how I start an oil painting of lilies. So here's a quick update on how it's looking now. You can see that I've added a lot more detail and I have some buds to break up that pink, more reflection on the vase, a lot more blues and some black in this background. And I'll give you a closer look so that you can see where that background layer that I first started with is showing through. You can see I've left a lot of the violet from that first layer in that shadow. And there's there's still a lot of brown showing through the blue, um, especially right here. You can see some of that brown. And that's exactly what I was going for with the colors that I used for that first layer. I wanted some interest and variation in color to show through my final painting. This painting isn't completely done, um, so I can share another update when it's fully finished but you can see there are a lot of changes from that first show. And if you didn't catch episode 20, it's still available for you to go back and watch. I hope everyone has a great weekend. Gosh, gorgeous. <laughs> so lovely. I'm, I can't believe how beautiful it looks. And like she said, if you guys didn't watch the episode, it's episode 20. You can always mm -hmm. go back to look at all of our episodes. They are all incredible, like I was telling in the beginning. So I love what she's doing, how it's turning out. Dion, I mean, you still have a challenge, remember? <laughs> you need to... <laughs> <laughs> hey, now listen, the sunflowers are looking amazing that you've been left, remember? You're right. I even, I mean, I've done them like three times now. I'm obsessed with sunflowers now. Okay, really? I remember. I remember yes. when we were going to talk, the episode we were talking about sunflowers, and you were like, I don't paint sunflowers. And we're like, yeah, you do. And now look at you. <laughs> I know. I'm obsessed with them now. So, okay, fine. I know I need to do that. Lilies are going to be on, on my next to-do list. Um, and I should be able to do them pretty well. They're the same type of pointed. And and after, after you know, I know we have our special. And so I'm really excited um, yeah. for tomorrow. You guys, make sure you set your calendars for the same time as today. It's going to be 10 o'clock Pacific, 12 o'clock Central. And you're going to have a very special. We're doing a feature about the lilies and how to use them in your autumn bouquets as well. Yes, we had the wonderful Jamie Jameson come on yesterday and she showed us how to make this beautiful lily arrangement. And so you won't want to miss that tomorrow. It'll be airing on bloomtvnetwork.com. Absolutely. And before we introduce our guest for today, everyone in our audience, this is a great topic. So put in your questions. We always read them. We we have an expert with us. Oh, this is going to be a great show. It's the second time she's been around. I'm so excited for today's show. We have with us Jesse Sierra and I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, Jesse. How are you? We see you. We're so happy to have you with us. I am so pleased and thrilled and excited to be with you gals again. I had such a blast the last time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it made my day. We all had a great time with we you. We did. And, and once again, as one of our Bloom guests, we do this show every week and you bring on all of this content. And I, we're always just like, wait, you do what? And then what? You can do what? And you can put what where? I just, I know that since I've been an expert on Bloom TV, that I have watched our videos of our experts, which we do have over a hundred of them, by the way, you all, and, and hundreds of videos. I keep finding new ways to use products that I've always heard about, but finding new ways to do them. Um, and you not just do things beautifully, but you teach us mm -hmm. about flowers and you have some really big projects coming on. So I'm excited to learn more about that here in the in the next few minutes with you as well, Jesse. So thank you so much for coming back and hanging out with us this Friday. Oh, Yay. it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Tell everybody what you have brought today. What are you going to do, girl? Well, if you like cocktails, you are going to love this setup. I am just a cocktail maven, self-taught, but definitely ready with my shaker. Today, we are going to be making a frozen melon ball cocktail, which we're going to rebrand for Halloween. It's going to be called Zombie Juice. And 
I think you can see why. It's bright green. <laughs> the second content. Ooh. Oh yeah, right? You see this? It's, I mean, <laughs> this is Midori. This is a melon, Japanese melon liqueur. It's sweet, it's fruity, and it's perfect oh. for all your zombie dreams. <laughs> wow. I did not yeah. even know that existed. Very cool. <laughs> oh, I mean, there's a background to this. If you lived in the 90s, you may have flashbacks. Um, <laughs> but the second drink we're going to do is a very traditional riff on a cider whiskey cocktail. It's almost like a Negroni, but it's called a Bolvedere. And we are going to replace the gin with rye whiskey, one of my favorites. And it's warm, it's inviting, full of apple and orange. We're using Campari, which is an herb and floral infused liqueur. I mean, it's just perfect if you love flowers and if you love the fall. Ooh, nice. Wonderful. This sounds yummy. So mm -hmm. are these products that you have here, are these all ingredients that someone can just get at a regular li liquor store or any of them custom or specialized? No, these are all items that you, if you walk into your local liquor, liquor store, they're so, they're very common. They're very well used. So you can find a sweet vermouth for your martinis. We're going to be using some of that. A nice vodka is, is a beautiful thing, very clean. And then that rye whiskey, you should have no problem. And then if you go to the grocery store, you can pick up some local cider as well as some fresh citrus and you're all set. Ooh, can't wait. Sounds yummy. I love I love all cider drinks, you know, and, and I find these things too, like if you have a sore throat, you know, in the winter, it's fun to make these for that too. <laughs> it absolutely is. And you know, a little whiskey goes a long way for soothing that throat too. <laughs> so which one are you starting with today, Jesse? So I want to start with the whiskey cocktail. And this okay. is a really easy one because you don't need any special equipment. All you need is a large glass or shaker cup and a long spoon. This is a classic cocktail, a stirred cocktail. So this is one of the earliest mixed drinks. And once you see how much uh, sort of love and, and spice and sweetness is in it, you will be addicted. So the very first thing we're gonna do, place our cup down, we are going to add some of our rye whiskey. Now rye whiskey has notes of cinnamon and vanilla, clove. There's even a little bit of anise in there. It's so beautiful and it gives you a little fire in your belly. So we're gonna oh. pour that Just in. Sorry to introduce you, Jesse, but is there like a dry whiskey you would recommend? Somebody's asking here in the audience. Uh, whiskey, yes. You know, I really like Yippie Kaye double rye, um, but you can't go wrong with the old standby. There's, um, oh goodness, goodness, Crown Royal rye whiskey. It's okay. very affordable. It's delicious in cocktails, uh, but those would be my two favorites. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Absolutely. And Mandy would like to know, Jesse, please tell me the recipes are in a link someplace where she can find these recipes, please. They absolutely are. They currently live right now on my blog, straighttothehipsbaby.com, but you can find more cocktails there as well as several cocktails on my Bloom TV episodes. So it's just cocktail all the time. <laughs> <laughs> So the next ingredient I'm going to add is this beautiful sweet vermouth. Now sweet vermouth is often used in martinis, but it adds like a juicy lusciousness. We're gonna pour that right in. Next step is the Campari. It's a beautiful color. I'm not sure you can see just how beautifully burnt amber. It's almost the color of my jacket to tell you the truth. And this is filled with bitter orange, herbs, uh, different sorts of bark and flowers, and it has this beautiful sort of acidic orange flavor to it. We're gonna add that right in. And of course, apple cider, just a touch. Now, if you wanted to make this extra special, you could use a caramel apple cider. I did that once and it was spectacular, let me say. Oh. But today we're using a regular apple cider. Okay. And this is very special. This morning when I was whipping this up, I felt like a little witch in the kitchen. <laughs> this, is, what this is a cinnamon simple syrup. Now, simple syrup we use often to flavor and also sweeten our cocktails, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio of sugar and water boiled. But what's amazing about this is you can add flavor to it. So I just added a little bit of ground cinnamon, and you can see it's, again, a lovely warm color. We're going to add a touch. I don't like my cocktails too, too sweet, so I only add a little bit in, but you can make it as sweet as you want. Okay. A little touch of orange, right in, fresh is best. And then our long spoon. Now I'm sure you're like, what is this? Is that an ice cream sundae spoon? No. 
<laughs> a bar spoon. I'm just gonna give it a quick stir. And they usually say 11 stirs, 20 stirs, whatever you want to do. I mean, cooking and cocktail making, it's fun. Right here, we're going to take some of our special craft ice, but if you have regular ice at home, that's perfectly fine. And you're probably wondering, how are we going to chill this? Well, we're going yeah. to pour it over the ice cube. Oh. Right there. Beautiful. We're going to take a little bit of the rind of an orange right here, nothing fancy, and we're going to spritz the top with the oils. Spritz. Oh, yeah. Spritz, just twist and the oils from the orange sort of spread out along the top and flavor the rim. And I had no idea. Oil. And now you have your awesome cider and whiskey cocktail. Yum, Ooh. that looks so good. Look at this. <laughs> Jesse. when did you develop a passion for, cause there's kind of an art to it. I mean, you can make a cocktail or you can make a cocktail. <laughs> Girl, you're going oh, around. I love that question. Um, you know, to tell you the truth, I was never a big drinker. I was a professional ballerina for many years, which meant that I had to be very strict with my, my routine, my lifestyle. Um, but once I started getting into cooking and playing with flavors, I realized I wanted to play with liquor. I wanted to play with cocktails because cocktails can be beautiful. They can be well-rounded. They can be elevated. And I found that I was like a mad scientist in the kitchen, pouring a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I, it's one of my true passions is to create cocktails that are not only delicious, but also for someone who's not so familiar with mixology that they can recreate at home easily. So my entire catalog is, ca is, is cocktails that someone with zero experience could easily make at home. Ooh, that, that is that. very, very, very helpful, right everybody? And um, Junk and Gypsy over here, which is Tammy Weber says, caramel, apple cider? Yes. Yeah. Yummy. <laughs> yes, everybody just went, yes, that sounds delicious. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. You can make this a mocktail if you wanted to. Just refrain from the liquor, add a little bit of chai tea, chilled chai tea, and a little bit of extra cider, and you have a perfect mocktail for your kids. Oh, okay. That is so yeah. fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I wanted to tell you too, I saw this come through. Um, someone said that they loved it when you were on last time. So they're oh. excited here. <laughs> I, that's so good to hear. I love being on and getting to talk to you in the audience. I mean, I want to spread the passion for flowers, for cocktails and good food to everyone. Well, you do it so well and you deliver so beautifully. Um, tell me about this green zombie juice too. What, what is this going to be about? <laughs> Ooh, this is fun. Now, um, you know, I, I'm of an age where majority was served in all the dance clubs. And I won't say exactly how old I am, but I'm old enough. And, uh, <laughs> but it was the thing, and they would make melon balls, which was a fairly sweet drink. It was almost overwhelmingly sweet. But when I saw Majority, I, I said, I wanted to, to create something, again, elevated, a little bit more mature, a little more refined, but still fun, because how can you not have fun with green liqueur? Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so this cocktail is actually... A, a great melding of flavors and technique. We are actually going to up the melon flavor by using fresh melon ball juice. So okay. all I did was throw some melon, uh, sorry, some um, honeydew melon, there we go, into a blender, with a little bit of water, blitz it, strain it, and you get this delicious melon juice that tempers the sweetness of the melon liqueur. So the very first thing I'm going to do, take my handy dandy blender. Okay. I'm going to add my green Midori, and you can see it's beyond green. Like It is green. <laughs> right in. I'm going to next add some high quality vodka. You want something very clean with no aftertaste. Right in. The next step is some fresh lime juice. Very, very little, but it adds brightness. Orange juice, again, fresh is best. So there's an interplay between the citrus and the melon. It's sweet. It's kind of perky and sassy. Um, and then we're going to add just a little bit of regular simple syrup, that sugar to water boiled ratio, just a touch because the Midori is quite sweet. If I remember correctly, you grow your own fruit trees in the back, right? 
I have several fruit trees, absolutely. I have some apples and I have some pears, but I tend to focus a lot on herbs. Um, okay. That's where my passion is, herbs and flowers. And it's one of those things, I infuse my, my simple syrups with it or I'll make flavored vodkas. Um, it's really kind of fun to play with. That's fantastic. So the next part, it's not a slushy without ice, right? <laughs> lots and lots of ice. Now, the measurements for this particular drink make two, and it's a great batch cocktail too, if you're going to have a Halloween party, and you can garnish with lime, you can garnish with edible flowers. I have some edible flowers right here, actually, that we'll use in a minute. Now, hang on to your hats. This is going to make a lot of noise. <laughs> okay. okay. Set. Yep. Do your thing. <laughs> No worries. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a slushy. You know, when you were a kid, you went to the corner store and you got your favorite blue slushy. Well, uh -huh. it's a little bit more fun. <laughs> <laughs> An adult slushy. <laughs> adult slushy. Look at that, right? This is so good. And today I'm going to play a little bit with the color. I'm going to add just a little bit of lavender from my garden and Aww. some bee balm. Why not make it pretty? It could be a very Why not? Fancy zombie. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm scrolling through your Instagram and that's one thing that you definitely do very well is you know how to make pretty. Oh, there's so much beauty in this world. Why not share it? <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, someone asked, do you have any non-alcoholic cocktails in your blog? I do. I have several that are mocktails. And if you write me, this is my trick, my secret, I really let some people know about. Um, if you write me, I will make any cocktail on that site into a mocktail. I am slowly updating my catalog to include alternate versions because so many of us are, we want to try to refrain or restrict a little bit during these times, or there's just parties or events where a cocktail may not be appropriate, but you still want a fancy drink. <laughs> So if you don't see it on my blog, write me and I will answer in a heartbeat. Oh, that's so nice. I love this comment. Uh, it says, <laughs> Jesse, you had me at adult slushies. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I try. <laughs> you try. I, I try. And also I to be fun because so much of cooking and cocktail making, you know, there's a barrier. People think, oh, I couldn't do it, or oh, you have to be trained. No, you just need some good directions. You need to have a giggle. You know, if you want to take a sip and you're, you know, oh, no, no, add some more simple syrup. You know, it's flexible. It's all about personalizing your experience with that cocktail shaker. And what's this about steak nachos? I see Shelly's comment that says, I didn't know what was for dinner tonight, but after seeing um, she knows what she's going to have. So you also have food on your blog. I have lots of food. I, um, Shelly, the nachos are amazing. <laughs> um, I, now I, we'll, have, we'll all have to go check them out. <laughs> yes. I mean, I love to say that I have a love affair with butter, sugar, and all things liquor. <laughs> Um, I believe in really enjoying your food, really bringing great bold flavors, step-by-step -step recipes, real ingredients. There's almost zero sort of shortcuts on my blog, but that doesn't mean that the recipes aren't easy to make. So those steak nachos are perfect as a sheet pan supper. I make them on days when my kids have after school activities and I don't want to come home and make a big dinner. I just put everything on, put it in the oven, plop it in front of my children, and they are happy. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to have to remember that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Carrie, you need to take notes on that one because you've got four of those little little ones to feed. <laughs> I do. I've got four. They're always so hungry. So, Jesse, tell me about your Halloween submission you did for Bloom TV Network because there's a fun contest going on right now. Oh, my goodness. And I have to say thank you to Bloom TV for letting me play because really this was me outside playing with flowers playing with color and even putting a little cocktail in there because I couldn't help myself. Um, so for our Halloween contest, if you jump on over to Bloom TV, you will see that we have a whole page of videos from our creators and one of them is mine. And I created an enchanted Halloween table. 
We went to the woods out back. You can't see it now, but everything is yellow and, and uh, orange and red. All the sugar maples are changing. And I oh said, gosh. I want to create something spooky, mysterious, but more enchanted than scary. So my, my team and I, we created this table stay full of flowers, like mums, lilies, roses, um, different sort of grasses, like witch's broom, and multiple arrangements. And we set them up outside in the middle of the woods under an arbor of yellow birch. And we created candlesticks with uh, beeswax candles that you can mm. keep going the wrong direction, <laughs> that you can see. <laughs> and it created this magical table that at first you look at it you're like, oh yeah, that's, that completely belongs there. But then you do a double take. Like, that, that doesn't belong there. So it looks like it just kind of appeared and there's a tarot deck filled with flower facts. And you know, you should sit down and enjoy a little glass of a, a blue concoction that I made and get your cards read. And just as quickly as you sat down and then got up, it blinked out. And that's the quality we wanted. We wanted it to be very fairy tale like very Baba wow. Yaga um, sort of a kind witchy sort of way and I love how it came out and I also provide tips on how to create these floral arrangements as well as provide elements and instruction so that you too can make it at home for Halloween or for your next harvest supper because really all of the tips and tricks that these creators really share with you you can do at home you can choose the event you can choose the venue because we're here to to help celebrate but also educate oh, absolutely wow. yeah. you're so excited about it i'm excited too i haven't seen it I'm oh like, i was vibrating i was like Ooh, this is perfect. do we have a little clip that we can play i feel like we do we I have feel we do clip? yes perfect tablescape is like a painting the small details make the big picture come alive our spooky tablescape has an air of mystery. A thrifted table makes a perfect base for our autumn florals, our fall fruits, and whimsical decor touches. With just a few touches, you can create a truly magical scene. Let's take one last look and wishing you all an enchanting Halloween. Oh, that is beautiful. Wow. Jesse. Thank, you. Thank you so much. It was um, a pleasure, just a pleasure to create it for Bloom. And well, there are more, there are more entries that we can see, or is the Halloween, um, ladies clarify for me, is the Halloween contest that we have going on still going on or is there, has it already closed? It's closed, but um, all of our viewers, everyone, you can vote on the videos that you like the most. Uh, you go to bloomtvnetwork.com and you'll see the Halloween contest right there. You can take a look at all the entries we got, all the videos, and vote for the one you like the most. I've already browsed through a lot of the entries, and I'm amazed at the creativity that everyone has <laughs> in all different areas. That's all centered around the flower. It blows me away. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'm going to do that as soon as I'm off of here. I'm going to take a look through all those videos so I can see Jesse's full video. Um, and we are, I'm almost positive that the winner receives, did I hear a thousand dollar gift? Yes. Like a, woo! And the second place gets 500. So Bloom really showed up for the prizes. I'm impressed and I'm, I'm excited to see these videos. Jesse, you're just phenomenal. Thank you for being amazing. Yes, oh, thank you for yes, having thank me. You. <laughs> it's been such a joy to talk to you, amazing ladies, and I can't wait to see more of your work. I continue to be so inspired by you all. Oh, thank yes. you. The same goes to you. And keep in mind, viewers, when you are making your cocktails, your mocktails, whatever you do, be sure you tag Jessie because she's straight to the hips baby on instagram and you can tag her um you can tag bloom tv flowers and friends and we would love to share what you have created as well on our social media absolutely thank you jesse all right guys we have some fun little segments for each of us today right yes right? Well, you, okay. you, we can't wait to see what you're going to show us, Kara. 
Yeah. So when I was thinking about what I wanted to do today, you know, I know that planting bulbs are on a lot of people's minds right now. In fact, I've got my nice little bowl of daffodil bulbs right here. I am a huge daffodil lover. I have over 7,000 daffodils at my farm, which is a little crazy. Um, I thought I would tell you, you know, a little about daffodils today and how to plant them in case anyone needs some tips. Um, let me show you real quick. Uh, I just planted, I, I've been planting daffodils for years around here, but I just planted a big daffodil field earlier this winter. And here's a photo of it earlier this spring. And I, pl I planted several, well, thousand daffodils right here. And I will actually be adding to that this fall um, even more. And my goal is for it to be just a beautiful place for people to walk through and see all of these different types of daffodils that you may otherwise didn't know existed. Um, one of my favorite things about when I show <laughs> all the daffodil photos is everyone just kind of thinks of the yellow wild daffodil. Uh, right that you see maybe on the side of the road and there's really just thousands of different cultivars. There's pink ones, there's like dream sickle orange ones and I love collecting those. So. But Kara, uh, I have to ask you a question, sister. Yeah. I, um, you said you have 7,000. Now, was that just because you could, you, you, you just, they had a discount that day or was that literally <laughs> like, I mean, no. like, hey, you could have <laughs> a little bit on that. Like, you, I know, right? Do you have like it's a personal a... love for them or is it, um, that was your plan all along was to really have your whole daffodil section or like I said, did you just get a good deal? Um, well, it's when <laughs> I, I do have a love for them. So I started collecting them a few years ago and I think I planted 300 my first year. And to me, that was a lot. And I was just hooked when they bloomed the next year. And, uh, later that fall, I ordered 2000 and I planted 2000 more. Awesome. And then um, there is a American daffodil breeder that I follow on Instagram, and he has all kinds of very unique varieties, and he happened to send me a lot. And so that is part awesome. of my collection that I have, too, that um, they're rare daffodils that you really can't find too many other places. And uh, okay. But this year I ordered a couple thousand more to plant, and so I just have a love for them. Um, daffodils, you know, many pe people think they're a short-lived flower. They are. But uh, a fact about them that some people don't know is there are early blooming daffodils, there are mid blooming daffodils, and mm. late blooming daffodils. So I can easily go eight weeks and have Ooh. eight weeks worth of daffodil blooms at my farm wow. because I am staggering all these different varieties. And it just takes Wonderful. time to learn all that kind of stuff. Um, but so I have these daffodils right here. This is one of the varieties that I ordered. And I have a fun little photo I wanted to show you of them. Yeah. Oh, them. girl. Woo. Mm -hmm. Those this are is gorgeous. Right here. This is called Altruist. And forgive me if you guys hear a lot of wind. It suddenly got windy outside. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that particular daffodil because, for one, the orange center. I mean, look at the center it's of that. It's so just striking. Beautiful. Yeah. But the, the interesting thing about that daffodil is it has a very masculine sense. You know, a lot of flowers have a very feminine floral scent. Uh -huh. This particular daffodil, it reminds me of like a man's cologne when I smell oh, what? it. What? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I didn't know that. Do you think we could get those bulbs or only you because you know a lot of <laughs> growers? Whoop. So sorry, guys. I'm sure it's very windy on your end. Um, yeah, You're you can okay. actually get some from me. I have a bunch. Uh, that Yes. <laughs> yes. So I love those daffodils. So when planting your daffodils, they generally like a full sun location. You can okay. definitely plant them in some shade too, but they do best with full sun. Mm -hmm. And you, um, you, know, you just dig your ground up and you plant them about six inches down. And you always plant them pointy side up. And of course, here's the roots and you plop them in just like that. Now, something that many people don't seem to know about daffodils is they think that you have to replant new each year because they don't come uh -huh. back. But they do come back, uh, which is one of my favorite things about them. Um, they are perennials. And one of the fun things about daffodils is they multiply. So over the years, this one bulb will become several bulbs. 
and give oh. me several flowers over the years. Yes. So That's when lovely. you are planting your daffodils, it's important <coughs> that you give them about four to six inches of space in between planting them because over time they are going to multiply and you want to give them room to do that. And so I just plant my bulbs and cover them back up with soil and I, I look at the forecast. I see if we have any rain coming, I let rain do its job and that's that. If we don't have any rain coming, I might water them in, but honestly, I let nature take care of it. Daffodils okay. are very tough. Um, and so we plant them about now, uh, fall, October, November, December. A little tip is if, if you get daffodil bulbs now and you see, oh, I can't plant them in the next couple of weeks for whatever reason, stick them in like a garage fridge away from other food just to keep the bulbs chilled and that will actually preserve the bulb and keep them from drying out so i actually since i grow cut flowers and i have a flower cooler i planted a lot of daffodil bulbs in january of this year because my bulbs were still great because i kept them cool wow. yes okay. but so once you plant them cover them back up and they'll bloom next spring and there's a big thing you don't need to do with daffodils. Okay, tell daffodil, us. Yeah, daffodil has a lot of pretty foliage, and it's important that you don't mow down that foliage until it starts to turn yellow. And I know it's not the prettiest thing to look at after a while, but it's that foliage that is dying back down after it blooms that it's giving the bulb energy to bloom next year. And so oh. it's important to wait about, it's about six weeks after it blooms is what it is. And so um, that's a little bit about how you plant daffodils. And I have okay. a couple of photos I wanted There's... to show you real quick. Um, here is one of my gardens that I started um, a couple of years ago. You can kind of see mm. the daffodils starting to come up there. Beautiful. The, Something fun I didn't know existed was there are daffodil competition shows. <laughs> and we happened to have one about 15 minutes from me earlier this year. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to enter my daffodils. I don't know what really to do except. Oh, um, my gosh. You won, didn't you? You won something, didn't you? <laughs> so it's really interesting. I wanted to show you. So this is what the room looks like when you. When you walked in, it's a lot of daffodils and it may be hard to see here, but they're in a lot of like little test tube bases. And there's all these different categories of daffodils and these different things they judge on. Like, you know, there's the double daffodil category. There's the single petal daffodil category. And there's a, a solid yellow, a solid white. There's all these different categories. And I just entered my daffodils, hoped for the best, my daughter and I went to have lunch and we came back and look what we found. I knew it. <laughs> oh, no. found, oh. I I was so excited. I my daffodils won some awards. So I'm definitely uh framing those. <laughs> So wow. that's so rewarding. I'm so proud of you. And it doesn't surprise me at all. And one of these days, I'm going to walk myself through your little daffodil farm. Um, Shelly would like to know, do daffodils require cold to bloom? I always yes. forget after being, she's, she's from Florida. And so she's, she's not sure. Do they, you have to have the cold before they're going to bloom? Yeah, they, daffodils do require a certain amount of what we call chill hours, which is below 40 degrees. Um, in our zone, I know Dion and I, we live in zone seven, like, you know, they thrive in our zone. We get enough in the winter. Um, as you get to the warmer zones, um, they may be a bit harder to grow, but it's not, I mean, I actually see people in zone nine grow daffodils. Um, so it's just, you know, you could always throw them in your fridge for a little bit and then plant them outside and then just let nature take its course for the rest of it. Um, because I, uh, I've never dug up daffodils and divided them. Once I plant them, they're there. But I will say, if you do plant daffodils too close to each other, um, and like I said, they multiply over the years, sometimes they can stop blooming well. And that just means okay. that they're crowded. So you may want to actually dig them up and divide them at that Okay. Point. Yes. I'm so glad you said that because I have some questions for you, Kara. So thank you for all of this information about daffodils. We have never planted daffodils. I've never even planted irises, but 
I have some irises that have been sent to me by a dear friend who lives in Washington and they don't do very well there. Um, mm. in, so in zone seven, irises are like, they're just, they're everywhere. Uh, but I've never had any before. Can you educate me on what to do with this bulb, my friend? Yes, um, absolutely. <laughs> so I have bulbs. And when you said that they multiply, do irises do the same thing as the daffodil? Is that oh, yeah, girl. Irises are the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Once you have, yes. Yes. So pull your bulb. Okay. So, so she packaged them really well. And these were actually, you all, these we're in Monet's garden in Paris. Oh, wow. And wow. my wow. friend obtained them from a friend of hers. And I guess this is what happens when they multiply. And yes. so they, they're overcrowded. And, you know, the garden doesn't get bigger there in Monet's, in Monet's um, like his land there out. And it's just, I've been there. I've walked through it. I have photographs. And now I have some white irises. And so I don't want to mess this up. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to mess it up. Yes. Okay. One day, Dion, when, when we like three years from now, oh, wow. you have to dig them up and divide them. You're you going to find some because I you have one? Be like, I have <laughs> irises from Monet's garden. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. And the fact that I okay. have been there and everything just was very, um, very heartfelt. And for yes. her to think of me, she knew how much I would love them. So this is what I'm opening. And this is what I, <laughs> I mean, yes. who, she was kind, she, she researched on how she should package everything and get it sent to me and preserve them. So what I would love for you to do is to, I mean, do, I don't know how deep to plant them care, yeah. but I want to plant them in the morning. Is this a good time to be planting my irises? Yes. It is the perfect time to be planting them. Perfect time to divide them too. If you, if, if anyone happens to need to divide them, but the key thing with irises is you don't want to plant them too deep. Okay. Do you see like a little white bulb part on the top, kind of near where the foliage is coming out? Yes. It may be, be buried. So what you want to do is irises want love to be planted in a full sun location generally. Okay. Um, so find a full sun location. You want to make sure that the soil drains well there, meaning you don't want it to stand with water for a long time after it rains kind of thing. Okay. And um, so just dig you a little shallow hole because you're actually going to leave a third of that iris bulb the little white part you've got, yep. you've got the your stem yep. you've got the bulb you actually yep. want to leave that top part of that bulb exposed you actually don't bury the whole thing oh so i don't put mulch over it or anything no don't put mulch no so when you bury your iris okay you leave a third of it sticking up it's okay. it, it sounds odd you want to bury the whole thing but you actually don't um, you want to leave that little white bulb that is on there. It's like that part where the leaves are yeah. coming out. Leave that exposed. And okay. put your dirt around the root part of the bottom. Okay? <laughs> I know. She's like, <laughs> you can do this. Okay, I, I feel I, you, Dion. I feel you completely. Karen, I don't want to kill you. You're no, not okay. so, You I can do this and you're like, like me. Irises well, are hard to kill. I will tell you that. You're not. They're hard to kill. Okay. That makes me feel good. But I'm okay. worried two things. I'm worried about two things. I'm worried that Abby's going to eat it. Okay. Like my Doberman. But I feel like I have the perfect spot out here because there is a raised flower bed next to the pool. So okay. I feel like the soil drains really well. It's going to be in full sun. Okay. Um, and Matt just built a new 24-foot um, trellis. So I feel like it could be filtered light. Yes. In the in the really, um, you know, heat of summer in July when it's over 100 degrees. But uh -huh. I feel like the rest of the year, it's going to stay completely dry and in the sun. So yeah. do you mind getting in the car tomorrow? And <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> I'll make you dinner. I'll make you dinner. I'll make you a, um, a zombie cocktail juice. Right. Whatever. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's going to be beautiful in that spot. Just dig you a shallow hole. Just make sure your roots are covered. That's it. You don't want... You don't want it to dry yeah. out and you just leave the top part of the bulb exposed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do it back okay. to where your pointer finger is. Like just fill it up there. Um, don't put mulch on top of it because okay. that could rot the bulb theoretically. Actually, any plant that you plant, it's really good to leave a couple inch collar of no mulch around that plant oh. because you don't want it to rot out. 
But let me tell you this. Irises are hard to kill. <laughs> You're going to do fabulous with this. <laughs> So, I cannot kill Monet's irises. No, you know what I, mean? I can't I, do that. Irises are so forgiving. So, and you have more than one bulb. Is that right? I have four. Okay. So it's good that you leave at least about 12 inches between each bulb because irises. Inches? Yeah. You were going to no, be. Amazed. it's like this. <laughs> well, yeah. My 12 inches. Yeah. 12 inches. 12 inches. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. You want to leave okay. a good amount of space in between each rhizome because that rhizome, it, they're, it's called a rhizome, they are going to multiply very quickly over the years. And about every three years is when you dig the irises up and divide all the bulbs. Okay, but just by cutting them? Pretty much. You can take a shovel. Take Wait. a shovel. Divide yeah. them up. Wait. Send some to Anna. Send some to Kara. <laughs> send some to Jesse. Send yeah. some to Monica. All, everybody. <laughs> right, right. Yes. Right, right. Yeah. I act and like so, I'm going to keep them alive that long. Oh, no, you go. <laughs> you are. And, and you know what? This is something to look forward to. In three years, we're going to be together yeah. with you, multiplying, dividing Iris. your Iris. Iris. <laughs> well, and you might actually get some blooms next year it depends some like the year after you plant the rhizome sometimes you get a bloom sometimes you don't and if you don't don't worry you will the next year it's just the iris getting settled in its new environment okay i do appreciate that warning because if they don't pop out in march next year i will think i did it i killed them i no, have to tell no. the ladies that no. my no this. no that that's totally normal if you don't okay get and and the reason okay. you want to make sure you give that iris rhizome a lot of room to grow is if your clump gets too uh big and you don't divide it it will stop it will produce less flowers over time so that's why it it's good to divide it every three years or you're so. so smart kara thank you yeah you're that. welcome i am so grateful anna are you learning things about i'm learning so much <laughs> i'm learning so much and mostly you know one of my parents dream is to have a daffodil um field just like yours okay and Aww. we we have a a farm outside the city and they plant about a hundred or two hundred daffodils a that's year. a lot <laughs> no now i see why why the field is not as huge as yours i mean i need to tell them we need thousands not Seven. hundreds we 7, <laughs> but I want to show you guys some pictures I have of last year. No, this year, this winter, I went with my family here in oh. Southern California. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I love it. And you know what? That to me looks like the daffodil called Tahiti, which is such an amazing daffodil. I love it. Oh, your family. Look at you. Oh, guys. so cute. Thank you for sharing that, Anna. That's just beautiful. Look at your family. I'm sure my, that's what my dad is looking forward to. And I think we need to, I need to, do you think I can still order a, hun, a couple hundred daffodils this year or is it yes, too late? I have plenty. Yes, you can from me. <laughs> oh. oh, we can order from you. So when Kara leaves my house, I'll put in Google Maps to San Diego and I think she'll be on her way soon. I'm currently, sure. I'm still receiving my shipments of bulbs, but um, I'm currently getting all that prepped right now. Yes. Okay. Good to know. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that on it. Such a, a, I was always so full of education and I really am going to go out in the morning and get those started. Um, Jesse, do you grow daffodils or iris? Can you grow any of those there? I can. You know, I live in the Berkshires in New England, so it's a really great spot, and we have this very nourishing soil. In fact, when you were talking about irises, it reminded me that we have recently separated all these irises, and I need to finish the job, but also give them away to the neighbors, because once they get going, they just propagate, and it's gorgeous in the springtime. I love irises. Mm -hmm. But um, Monet's irises... I, I, my, I'm intrigued. <laughs> I'm congratulations on getting those. I mean, that is treasure. I Do know, you know what I color they are? They're it, white. White, they're white. okay. Wow. They're white. And so I went through my photographs. I was there in 2019 
And I was going through my photographs and I saw a different variety of irises, of course, but I was trying to find the white irises. Um, I need to dig a little bit deeper um, just because there's every kind of flower there you can imagine. Um, but it was such a treat. And I, as sensitive as I am, I did tear up thinking my friend thought of me and took the time to research how to ship them to me. And she said, I just think they will do better there in Oklahoma than they will here in Washington. So oh, what a wow. special gift, right? It is. Yes. You know what another great gift is for me? Tell me. To spend every Friday morning here with you ladies. Ah. I mean, my, this I yes. feel so energized. I've learned so much today. There are so many new things I want to try. I want to get some daffodils for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do some cocktails this weekend. Uh, and I I can hardly wait for the next three years to get my share of <laughs> Iris. <laughs> I mean, this is so much, so pressure much now. fun. Now. <laughs> You've got this, Dion. No, be the best part, Dion, is Kara already told you. You you cannot go wrong with Iris. Yeah. So if, if this is good to know. Yeah, yeah, it's good to know. I do that does help a little bit. Um, ladies, thank you so much for being here. Jesse, you're a two-timer, and I love you for it, girl. Oh, thank you so much. I, I would love to be back. I would, I just want to sit and have coffee with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward yes. to that day. Yes, everybody, make sure you go to Bloom TV Network. Hit that top little tab that says Halloween contest. All of the videos, all of the entries will play, or at least the finalists, so you can take a look at that as well. What else do we have going on, ladies? We have a winner from our, oh, okay. We also have the one free month of Bloom TV with the code FLOWERS. Be sure to use this because Bloom TV is filled with wonderful tutorials, videos, pilot shows. We have pilot shows coming almost what? every week. What? 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 I'm like, yes. All kinds of fun stuff going on there. Oh, quick thing. We forgot to mention this. It's a really exciting day for you, Dion. Why? Yes. Why is it an exciting day oh, for you? Oh, we did Dion. forget. <laughs> Let's Again, show some photos. Um, so the, the Turquoise Irish Journal magazine is officially leaving the printers today. And as you can see just on that, pull that little image back up there. Um, right there, we see Leah, who's the salted image. Her She's featured inside our very first printed issue. Holly Capelli, which you guys all know and love as well. Uh, her pumpkins are there and she's featured. She's got six or eight pages inside our magazine. Um, so our subscribers are going to be receiving their very first printed copy of our magazine over the next few days. And I am so honored and we actually have a page for Bloom TV inside of it as well. So um, one thing that Bloom has done for me has connected. Oh, I'm Anna. <laughs> Hello. I'm sorry. Um, Anna is also inside this issue. And so Anna and Holly and Leah and Anna, hi, thank you. No, I read your I read your article that you submitted and hmm. I just felt like it was a trip down memory lane and you shared so much about um, your perspective and it just, it's always so fascinating for me to hear someone's story and why flowers, what connects everyone and how they're all, we're all so similar in our love for flowers, which is exactly what we're doing right here at Bloom TV. So, you know, on a beautiful person, thank you so much for being in our, my very first issue. And thank I you, Kara, for reminding me. We have a video, we have a video, a, a, a really short video about your magazine. Let's play it. I don't know what that is. I don't know whose phone was ringing. Sound effects. Yeah, it was a total sound effect, but that was an image that my printer sent me because she knew that I would be just waiting by the phone for those copies to be coming off. So she sent me that and thank you for running that. And thank you for Aww. letting me talk about it. Um, you guys reminded me that I needed to share that with everybody. And you can go to the turquoiseirisjournal.com and get your own subscription of that as well. Um, thank you, everybody. Can people still get a printed copy? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. wow. You certainly can. Absolutely. 
And before we go, we have a winner up from our weekly giveaway. Carol Morales. Carol, Yay. congratulations. Yay. <laughs> Fantastic. You get one free year of Bloom TV access to Bloom TV. You get paint from Dion. Please contact us so we can send you your free gift. Yes, Carol, let me send you some paint, friend. I know you know how to find me. So um, let's send you uh, or send us your address so we can get all of that to you as well. Well, we're so happy to be here with you, everyone. We're here every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, and we love spending this hour with you talking about flowers with friends, drinking coffee, learning about cocktails, learning about painting, learning about all there is to know about flowers. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Have a fantastic fall weekend. And Kara, tell everybody why they need to tune in every Friday. Well, because everything is better with flowers and friends. And also, I want to make sure we thank our sponsors, too. We have we have several, actually, really fun new sponsors. Let's play our, uh, oh, let's let's play our video. Let's roll it. We have built the world's first flower-focused streaming network, bringing the public educational and entertaining shows that highlight the magic of flowers. Learn how to heal through flowers, cook with flowers, design your living space to reflect nature, make crafts using florals, sustainably garden, and so much more. We are your network for all things floral. Join us at Bloom TV as we help bring beauty to the lives of people and the planet through nature's most beautiful creation, the flower. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to be busy doing this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Me too. <laughs>